Two-way tables. Two-way tables are used to present data and to help us describe association, sorry, associations between categorical variables. You'll remember from earlier years that categorical data is, well, categories, non-numerical data, like saying whether you're male or female. In this example, whether you like or don't like Fortnite. Um, and so we, since we can't do some of the maths, uh, we can still look at an association with a two-way table and percentages. So when we do, oh, we've got a survey here. 100 people were surveyed to investigate whether liking the game Fortnite is associated with gender. We've got the results given to us, how many females were surveyed, how many males were surveyed, and some of their results here. You would always put this into a standard two-way table and then into a percentage two-way table. So a two-way table, the data that comes back actually goes just in the middle four. And I've linked another video which goes over this in excruciating detail from year eight. Everything else is either totals or labels. Your response variable goes, actually I'll, I'll pop in a different color so you don't need to write this on every table but on our example to remind us. So our response variable will be here, our explanatory variable will be here. So is liking the game Fortnite associated with gender? So remember we've got to work out which one's our response variable. Um, if we say males are more likely to like Fortnite, then our response variable is like and dislike, and our explanatory variable is gender. The other way around, it doesn't work so well. Fortnite players yeah, are more likely to be male. Yes, we could possibly go either way. Gender is usually going to be your explanatory variable because we're looking to see if gender has um, an effect. So we have too many pens here. Gender, male and female, and like. So you can find out the variables in here. Liked Fortnite and did not like Fortnite. If you want to label them, you can label here or you can pop a line across here if you want and say gender, Fortnite, something like that. Now, you put in the information that you have. The box at the bottom of the column is the total for that column. So there were 58 females and there were 42 males. Of those 58 females, 32 liked Fortnite. So they go over here, females who liked Fortnite. And you'd have to subtract to work out how many didn't like it. So it's 32, 42, 52, uh, that would be 26. But you could also very quickly grab your calculator, 58 minus 32, yes, that was 26. Of the males, 12 did not like Fortnite, so that means that 30 did. The only challenging thing really about a two-way table is just making sure the numbers go in the right spot. And if you're finding you're not certain about it when you make them, do feel free to watch the other video. Now then you can add up across to get the other totals. So 62 people in total liked it. And what have I got here? 38 people in total did not like it. And either of these, all the like and dislike, or all the male and female, should add up to the total that we surveyed, which was 100. And nothing goes in these boxes, although you can write total, just to remind you what we're finding here. So that's a two-way table. Now it doesn't really help us much, because while we can say that more females um, 
liked Fortnite than males, we asked a lot more females. So we really want to be looking at percentages. So you're likely to be reading or creating a percentage-based two-way table. The percentages come from the totals of the explanatory variables. So I'm going to say that calculate percentages out of totals of explanatory variables. So that means we're still going to have the same setup with our table. Male, female, like and dislike. It's just that we'll be looking at what percentage of males liked Fortnite and disliked Fortnite. So to do that, of course, it's the number of males out of the total number of males, the number of males who liked it out of the total number of males times 100. So our, we don't actually have to do working. I'm just going to show you how we'd calculate it. 30 divided by 42 times 100, 71.4% of, oops, 71.4% of males um, liked Fortnite. If we preferred, we could put percent as a heading, even gender and percent, so that we don't have to write the percent in here over and over again. So obviously to get the percentage of males that disliked Fortnite, we can either do 12 over 42 times 100, or we can work out what's left out of 100 here. It's up to you. So that would be 12 divided by 42 times 100, Twenty one point six. And you can see that that adds up to a hundred percent and would expect this column to add up to a hundred percent because that's a hundred percent of males and this to be a hundred percent of females. So when we work out this, it's thirty two divided by fifty eight, because it's out of the total number of females, times a hundred. That's fifty five point two percent and twenty six divided by 58 times 100 would give me 44.8% and that would add up to 100%. You can add across to find the total percentage who liked it. That would be 62% liked Fortnite and 38% all up, males and females, disliked Fortnite. So that tells us quite a lot. We can easily see that a higher percentage of males liked Fortnite than females, and a higher percentage of females disliked it than males. We can also see that overall, 60% of people liked it. So there's a lot of information there. So the skills we'll need are to be able to create a two-way table and a percentage two-way table, and then to interpret a percentage two-way table. Notice that we're going to use the word associated. We don't actually know that being male is what causes more of these people to like Fortnite. We can see that there's a pretty strong indication that that might be the case, but there could be something else going on. We haven't tested to see is it that more males like Fortnite because being male means you're more likely to like Fortnite or is something else going on? So for example, um, on days when more ice creams are sold, there's more crime. There's an association there, but we're pretty sure it's not a causation. Selling ice creams isn't causing crime. Chances are they're both caused by hot weather. So there could be other stuff going on and we're using the term association rather than, or explanation, because that's explanatory variable, but not causing. Now, if we then get asked to write a short report 
about whether there's an association with gender and liking Fortnite, we look at the percentages. If these percentages were pretty similar, like within about 5% of each other, like you know, 45 and 55% sort of thing, maybe 45 and 40, then we'd probably say there's no obvious association between gender and whether you like Fortnite. But if there's quite a large difference, as there is here, between being male and liking it and being female and liking it, then we conclude that they are associated. So we would write a report that explicitly referred to the percentages, such as from the table, we see that a much higher percentage and we quote those percentages. Much higher percentages, uh, much higher percentage of males than females liked Fortnite. And either in brackets or with a little dash, 71.4% compared to 55.2%, oh, I used a dash there, indicating, sorry, can't spell today, indicating an association. So we get pretty wordy between gender and liking Fortnite. So yeah, I will want, oh, I went off the screen, um, for you to say, we're looking at the data, which one is higher percentage, quote the percentages, say that whether the, or not there's an association.